All right, so Corey and I are happy to be here. We are, this is very weird because we're sitting at home in our dining room doing this. So it's kind of interesting. Um, we have one audience member, one of our dogs is sitting on the table joining us, um, but we're really happy to be here. Um, we love coming to T-Cubed and sharing things with y'all in person. So one thing that we're gonna need from you is if you have questions, please go to the chat and ask us questions. I know you're all muted, but that's the way that you can still interrupt us, share your thoughts on what we've said, um, and still hopefully have a very um, interactive time together because that's what T-Cubed is all about, educators sharing knowledge together back and forth. And um, just in case you don't know, even though we have last names, we are married, um, we are a couple, so if we start fighting or making fun of each other it's okay because we actually have that right because we've been married for 20 23 coming 20, this summer 20 no 24 this summer or whatever no okay <laughs> we'll, figure, we we'll figure that out sooner or later okay anyway let's uh start with a couple things we want to make sure that you have about an 84 plus ce okay so we're going to share tips and tricks things some of the things you have seen before probably and some hopefully you haven't or maybe we'll share them in a different way. But one of the key things is to make sure that you have a calculator that is up to date and the software that is up to date so that you can experience all of the neat things that we um, have to share with you. If you're gonna follow along with your own handheld on some of the things and you're not seeing the same thing we are, it probably is because you haven't updated in a while. I know I still run into calculators that I haven't updated. So what I have on the screen right now is just very quick tips about for the three pieces of it, technology, um, what they're, Oops, sorry. <laughs> Went to the how to do to check to see what their current OS is. Now to get, make sure that you're up to date, the Texas Instruments site, of course, is the place to go, education.ti.com. And so if you go to their main page, and then go to the downloads pull down, you'll see where you can check your software and OS under the downloads. If you go ahead and you can select that we're gonna work with an 84. So if we do the, um, there we go. there's TI Inspire, that's not what we want. There's my 84. So here is the TI 84 plus family. And so if we click on the learn more, this is where you can see to make sure that you have the correct updates or download them if you need them. So if I were gonna wanna to check my calculator, but that's what I'm checking for my updates, I select the calculator and it leads me to the page where I can download the appropriate items for my calculator. So that's kind of like the quick place that if you are seeing things that is different from what we're seeing, this is where you're going to want to go to after the session to make sure you get the latest and greatest, the TI-84 plus CE operating system. Okay, so let's get busy. Okay, so um, we're going to go back to the uh, our presentation and look at the first couple menus, things that are important to uh, work with. And these are those softies. And many of you are very familiar with at least the first one, the fraction. Um, I know a lot of my students were very comfortable with it. And this guy right here, kids figure out how to make things that look like fractions. So we want to start by solving an equation. 2x uh, squared plus 6x minus 3 equal to 0. And so we're going to use the um, fraction templates to solve this equation using the quadratic formula which i know my students know your students probably know my students will sing i will not sing but one of the nice things about these templates is notice we're kind of melding them together we're using the fraction template and we're also going to use the square root okay so that's kind of nice that you can actually type in the quadratic formula and Corey's doing that over on the right on his calculator to solve this quadratic equation. And so that it really looks like the quadratic formula. They're not doing any of the arithmetic. 
And so they're expressing just using the formula. And we can get our answer. One of the nice things that I teach my students and make sure they know is they don't have to do that whole process again when they want to use with the minus after that six. They can go up into their history using their up arrow. And then when they hit enter, it brings it back down into their edit area. And so then they can use their left arrow to back the whole way up to where the plus is and change it to a subtraction problem. And then they've done the quadratic formula completely. So you get their two answers numerically. Now, so, so that, uh, that's one of the nice features. And one of the other features that we wanted to bring out that a lot of people maybe know or maybe don't, I find that a lot of my teachers don't know is that the um, SmartView software, I can drag that screen, if I can get it to work, and drop it in. Oops, that's because I still have my calculator or my eraser going here. I can drag a screen and I just threw that equation, that screen into my smart notebook, but I could have taken that and put it into a Word document or anything. And all again, all you have to do is drag the screen from the smart view into any place that you'd like a print screen. And so that's a really nice feature if you use um, smart notebook or any of these kinds of softwares when you're presenting in your classroom to capture the things that you've done on the calculator right into your notes. I know if you're like me, I post all of my notes at the end of class into Google Classroom or some kind of platform that students can go look afterwards. Speaking of that, we are gonna do the same thing with this smart notebook. When we're finished, we're gonna turn it into a PDF and it will be posted so that you'll have access to it. Um, one of my favorite things to do though is to use the Y equals templates. A lot of people are not familiar with Alpha Trace or the F4 menu. Um, it's kind of, and when they see it, they're like, oh, what is this, who cares? Well, I love to do this. Uh, I teach algebra two, and I, a lot of my students struggle with what it means to factor. So I want to graph x minus two and uh, x plus three. Now I have a big spiel about this and Tracy's heard it a million times, so I won't give it to you. Um, but I do like to look at this and ask the kids. So they look at this and they see parallel lines, okay? Um, and I can do a lot of things with this, but what's really cool is in Y3, I can go in here and do alpha and then trace and do Y1 times Y2. And then I'm wondering what this is gonna look like. And I ask kids, and very rarely do kids understand or predict what this is. So I'm gonna ask Tracy, what do you think is gonna happen when I multiply y1 times y2? Well, of course, you're gonna get x squared minus five or something like that. Yeah, that or they think or they're gonna- minus gonna, six or- Yeah, they don't ever have a clue, but this is not what they think is gonna happen. And what I love about this is that they can see the relation between the factors and the zeros. And the beautiful thing about doing it with y1 and y2 is if I were to go in here and change this number to say x minus 4, what do you think is going to happen now? Well, the first line is going to, one of the lines is going to change and they're still going to have the same intersection points. Um, I can also go from the home screen and do that alpha y1, let me see here, y1 of let's say three, and it would evaluate or times y two of three. And it would actually find the value for me. So I can do function evaluation using the y equals as well. So those screens are kind of cool. So I think I'm gonna throw those in there as well. If I can get that same in there. Slowly drag. slowly drag it in there. <laughs> Tracy never, you know, I'm not a very patient driver and <laughs> she gets mad at me sometimes when I'm not a patient uh, with technology sometimes as well. So, all right. Shut yeah, up right one now. More. One okay, more. There, there we go. go. Well, kind of. Kind Good of. Job. All right. All right. All right. 
So uh, we wanted to remind you about those and extend upon those because some people are very familiar with the action. Oh, we forgot the most I, important I, thing. I was going to tell you that in a minute. Okay. I right. want to change your, oh, what are you doing? I'm thinking about changing your Y3 to a rational function. Oh, so you want to do Y1 divided, divided by? Divided by Y2. Okay. Do and, you mind? No, I can do that. And I want to do it a different way than with a fraction template. With the new, up, the latest updates to the CE, if you press alpha and then the X button, that's the shortcut for fractions. So oh you, my gosh. That's so much shorter than going in the menu. Of all of those templates that they give us now, that is the one that we use the most and they recognize that. And so show your students that. Oh my goodness. It's a sh great shortcut. And that was alpha x t theta n. Really quick, they're right next to each other and that pops up that fraction template. Yeah, again, if you miss it, if you take away one thing, if you didn't know this, um, this is probably my favorite thing in this whole workshop, is alpha x for the shortcut. I'm a oh, shortcut guy. And Corey, guess what? Chicken butt. No, you can do that on the y equals screen too. It's oh. not just the home screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. You so, can actually do the fraction template here. So I can do alpha x and then do y1 divided by y2. Yeah. Did I really just say chicken butt on a video? Can I say that? Uh, this is live and it's going to be recorded forever. And it's forever. recorded forever. Sorry, Charlene. Okay. <laughs> they asked us, so they yeah, knew what they what were you, getting. You get what you get when you hire me. Okay. So those are those soft keys. Again, they've been around for a while, but I think that Alpha X, the shortcut to get your fraction template, is a huge new takeaway. Um, not totally brand new, but it's one of those that sometimes gets forgotten about. And then that Y var menu, actually when it first came up as a soft key, I had no idea how I would use it as far as in teaching. And so that is something that now that we've had time to sit with it, it actually can become very, very useful. There were, used to be ways to get that there, but it was too hard. This makes it so much easier. And so then we're able to actually take advantage of it a lot. Okay, now we're going to go to another button that is been around for a while, but it's the look has changed. I think, let's see what. What do you, I thought you were going to do. Going to go to mode. Yeah. All right. So if you hit your mode button, when was the last time you looked at the mode button to see what was there? I know before I was thinking about this last year, it's actually been a while. And I mean, there's things there that I'm familiar with. We've got the math print and classic, which we're always in math print now, so I'm not going to worry about that. We've got our floating, the radians and degrees thing, all that's pretty normal. But then if we start going down a little bit further to where it says full, horizontal, and graph table, to me, this is something that, hmm, interesting. So one of the first option is the horizontal. And at first I was like, what is this? So I think you're trying to graph something you can't. Yeah, I was having yeah, trouble graphing. Yeah, I have, I was, you interrupted me before I could finish typing yeah. the equation. Sorry. I want to graph X plus two. This is another case of a wife not listening to a husband. All right, so we're going to try to graph the rational function X plus two over X minus three. And when I press enter now, I should be hit able to get, hit graph. I'll see the graph. And so now notice we changed the view of what we're looking at from full to horizontal. And so up top, it put the graph of your function. And below, Corey was using his y equals. It's kind of like your other parts of your calculator that you can work with. You can work with your y equals or your home screen. And I think the home screen has been the one that I thought was very, very interesting. So now I've got a graph on the top here and I can do a function evaluation on the bottom. So I do alpha trace now, I can do y2 of uh, four and see. I think you're y1. Oh, I'm in y1, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm supposed to do yeah. y1, silly. And then if I um, 
So I know y1 of is four. I'm interested in what maybe happens at y1 of three. And oops, I need to find C in there. Oh, show them how to insert. Oh, you did that. Oh, I didn't. Okay, sorry. Insert was we'll do that in a minute. Second, and then in I insert I and S, which is above delete. But I can see it's divided by zero at that point. But if I so if I wanted to go in here and insert, make that a plus, or insert a number in front of the three, I can do second and then insert and put in another number and make it like x over 13. Now I'm not going to see the asymptote anymore, but I can still, and I can change my window, but I was able to insert. Yeah. Because that's, what, I, that's I, what the boss wanted. Yeah, and I did that because I actually showed my students that, this was like two weeks ago, I did that without even thinking. And they had never seen that before, the inserting. They're like, I always just retype the whole thing. And so it was kind of sometimes amazes me how I think they know a lot of things about the calculator, but not always. Now, I hit the up arrow. That's what's getting me up into that graph part of the screen. Because you've got two areas of your screen now. You've got your graphing. And we still want to interact with that because we have a lot of things that we can do with the graphing, we can use our trace. And so if I do the trace, then I can see if I'm moving around. And remember when you trace, you can jump to specific values. And then if I wanna make the connection with the home screen and the value of the function, I think I did it at three. Oh, I redefined, yeah, yeah I you redefined, redefined the it. function. So now we and then, oops, hold on. So then I can make those connections between the graphing part and the value of the function. So that's kind of nice. And then one other mode setting that's really nice that is related to that um, horizontal view is the um, graph table. And if I choose that, now I get a graph with the sides table. And I, I, we both really like this because this is a good opportunity for kids to compare multiple representations here. Um, and it was, it used to be able to do this, but the view was so hard to work with in prior versions. Resolution on the 84 plus CE is better that it makes this a very viable option for kids. So if we were able to make a table that was, um, I think I'm in, yeah, I'm in auto mode right now. Now, if I go back to the graph, now I have a table that has values that I can compare to the graph. And when I arrow down, there's the connection between the graph and the table, which is outstanding. And I can see my asymptote even by off my screen here. But um, that's a pretty impressive. Uh, improvement in the last few updates. So yeah, and since we're in a math print, notice we're getting our outputs for our table in fraction, which is really nice too. So this option here that um, Tracy it really is was a bigger fan of it, and she's made me into a big <laughs> fan of it because I've been able to not just because she's you know, wife because she's right. <laughs> it makes you have some options that you didn't have before. Now you realize I have that in a recording Yeah, she now. has that in recording now for all of the history. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that's everything in the mode that jumped out at me that I wanted to make sure that we brought out today. So let's continue the graphing a little bit, except we're going to talk about graphing piecewise defined functions. They have made significant, significant improvement for this. We actually, because we've got math print now, we've got all these math templates. I mean, we want to be able to type things in like they are show up in a math book. And how do piecewise defined functions show up in a math book? Um, and we're probably not going to cover it, but I do uh, want to mention the numeric solver has been greatly improved too. We didn't actually have that in our presentation mapped out, but um, if we do, we might come back, come back to that. But it's, if we have a little bit of extra time, that 
is always going to be the last option within the math menu. Um, it's greatly improved. And, um, but the piecewise is the next. So it's math up, up to get the piecewise. And when you choose this, you have to, um, all you have to do is decide how many pieces. And I believe it's limited to five. Five, five is the maximum number. Okay. That's weird that there's one piece, but there's a reason for that. Mm, okay. Well, maybe we can talk about that <laughs> another day. But there is a reason there is a piece. There's only one piece. So I'm gonna type this function in while Tracy gabs for a while. Okay. So Corey is on your y equals screen, and again, to get this ability to type in a piecewise defined function, you went to the math menu and then scroll up to get the bottom, and then there you'll see the piecewise option. Okay, so math menu, and then it's at the close to the bottom of that one. So it's by scrolling up, you get to it really quickly. And you have the option to do a piecewise defined function one to five. And so he's working on it now. To get the inequalities, if you'll notice, he is doing alpha math for the test menu. That's and this is, and you can use um, compound inequalities in oh. this menu uh, and in this menu only. Okay. As far as my understanding, it's you normally you can't, you have to do it with Boolean algebra, but here you can use um, compound inequalities within the restrictions. Which we're talking about because that's how we would want it, because that's how we write it when we see these in textbooks. There were ways of doing this. Oh, I made a boo boo. I have the wrong yeah, inequality. Wrong I hit pick the wrong inequality. My apologies. Do I have it the way that you want it? Um, let me double check inequalities. Yes. Oh, I wait a second. Happy. Well, we really can't see it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, I'm guessing that he's typed everything in right. Yeah, there is a little bit of a blub here, but it worked yeah, out. Let's yeah, see. Well, I'll show you something in a minute. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm still in graph table mode. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay because okay. I can actually explore my table. Yeah. Um, but let me get. Let, let's go go at those spots where it's breaking because one of the things you still have the issue on the screen of the graph. Students member have to add closed circles and open circles, and so we can use. He's tracing. I think you traced right. Yeah, I'm using trace. Remember, you can jump to those breakpoints so you can see what's happening right at three. And then we can see that it is going to that second piece of your piecewise defined function. But you might go into where x equals negative one, and it's going to the second piece. So we can talk about that relationship with how we defined the function and where those breakpoints are. Uh, a little tiny bit to the left of negative one, and it jumps to the other piece. Now, I actually do want you to go back to y equals, since you made that mistake earlier, would you mind making that again? I do wanna show you one of the things that I'm thinking I remember what happened because I've made this mistake before. But that last piece, if he has it strictly less, and let's stop a minute and think about what's gonna happen. Because we know as a math person, this is not a function, but your 84 calculator it graphs functions and it is supposed to, yep, it's huh. plotting points from left to right. So it's actually going to pick up the first piece and the second piece, and then is where it's getting confused. Yeah, it can't handle, it can't do the third part because it's already dealt with that. So that third condition can never be met again. So if you see this, uh, Especially if kids start to do it, <laughs> yep, or or you know, adults, adults sitting, next, sitting to next to you do it. You'll know that maybe oh they don't have all the pieces. Look at those inequalities because it's really easy to certainly make a uh, mistake on that. Um, but since I made that mistake, I um, I'm going to just let it be. <laughs> but I do want to. There's another way to enter functions. The problem when I had three pieces, you saw it kind of wrapped and I couldn't see all simultaneously so there's a way to do it on the home screen you do so he's going to define this function on the home screen so that we can actually see all three because imagine if you have four pieces or five pieces there's not enough space in the y equals in the interest of time is it okay if i only do two pieces yes that's, okay that's fine. 
Because we've already defined it, I just want to, you could imagine this being, but the typo could be, typing could be a while. Yeah. So let me do, do something easy. Yeah, like two plus X. Yeah. And I'm going to do that for X is less than zero. Sounds good. And then I'm going to do X squared where X is greater than or equal to zero. That sounds great. Now notice when he went to and decided he swaps, just see the little double quotes that it added at the beginning. I actually put those there. Oh, you put those I there. put those there. Okay. I was thinking it might no, be. It had to be no, it that. didn't do itself. I did that. And then I'm going to store that into, uh, do you want me to overwrite the other one or store this in a second? Y2. Put in Y2? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put it into Y2. I don't want to lose your mistake. Yeah, she wants evidence. You got a recording of my mistake. And when I hit enter this time, now I can see the whole function and it's been placed in Y2 for me. Now I'm going to get two piecewise functions graphed simultaneously, but that's not really important right now. But so on the screen notice or the smart, I put um, a note here because this is one thing that if you do this from the home screen, you've got to put the double quotes. And Corey got the double quotes by hitting the alpha and then the plus button. That's where you get your double quotes. And so that, I mean, that's just, this is useful if you're doing more than two pieces of a piecewise defined function so that you can see them as you're working with them and check and not make mistakes. Okay, it helps prevent mistakes because the screen, the Y equals screen is only so big. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm going to exit that um, graph table screen, if that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Because we, um, I don't think we're going to need that again, even though that's not a super helpful uh, graph right now. It's whatever. Yeah. So, okay. So um, are we okay? Are there any concerns or questions or chat things? I don't see anything. Okay. No, no screaming and hollering at me. Okay. Um, so moving on, let me go ahead and clear these out and she's going to talk about the next thing, I guess. Okay. So the other thing that's kind of interesting and new is about drawing tangent lines. We have what's referred to as an interactive draw tangent now. So um, Corey teaches calculus. He taught calculus for a very long time. I did for a little bit. Um, now I'm a statistics lover. and so here is Corey's favorite function to do calculus. And when he's doing calculus, we talk about tangent lines all the time. And so one of the things that they have is we can draw a tangent line on this graph. And that's under a second program, which is the draw menu. And they've had this before, but they've updated it. Again, it's something that's like, oh, I like the changes they've made. So if he selects that tangent, one of the things I want you to stop and notice, there's a soft key on the screen. Keep an eye out for those soft keys. There is a menu soft key on the screen right here. That means, hey, go take a look and see what it does. So if you hit that, notice you can change the color. This is going to be for your tangent line. So that's a different color from your function, so it'll stand out. And of course, Corey is picking pink. That's his favorite color. Um, you can change the kind of line. I usually don't do that. But the other cool thing is you can store the resulting tangent line into one of your Y values, into Y2. So now I can put the tangent line and then get the equation right away. And that way I you know, don't have to write it down or anything. So if I hit OK now, where should we go to draw a tangent line oh, on this trig oh, graph? I want to say three, but no. What is the date today? Date is, let me look, March 14th. Oh, my gosh. That's basically Pi Day. So I think we have to go to Pi. So I can type in, I'm going to find the tangent line at, of this graph at X equals Pi. We were going to do, I think in the handout, she has like negative four or something. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing this on, this on Pi Day. day. Sorry. we my presentation was on a Friday. Yeah, this is, where, <laughs> this is the only thing I put my foot down on. We are going to find the tangent line at X equals Pi. And so I can do that. 
And it's interesting. I love when we do problems like this because kids are like, well, wait a second, that's not tangent because it hits the graph at multiple points. So then, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing here. Know, I'm but if I press, thing. yeah, quit messing with it. <laughs> I can see that the slope is negative, approximately negative one, and that's a little bit of rounding error. And it looks like it's negative one X plus um, pi over two. Oh, roughly. Yeah, 1.57. Yeah, yeah 1.57. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we got a little pi action in on for, for you guys for your pi day. Um, you know, it only comes around once a year. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think that's enough of that. Let's move on and talk about um, window settings a little bit. So there's a couple things in here that I know are kind of interesting. And um, if you don't notice them, you don't notice them and might never use them. But I want you to stop and take a notice. Normally, we just use our window settings, you know, to do our standard zooms, okay, just because we have built in zoom options. And so even though I kind of have it um, switched around, let's take a look at the built in zoom options. So when I Look at those all look familiar to me, but if I scroll down more, they've added some extra ones. Um, Zoom standard is the you know the gold uh, standard, I guess. But there is a Z quadrant one, Z frac one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth. Um, there have always been ones that are kind of nice, like Zoom trig for trig. But when you're zooming in the standard window, we have always had the the problem of the icky trace mm -hmm. okay so now if i do zoom let me pick like one half one half because yeah. that's what she told me to do that's, what I want. Ooh, that's cool all right so i have a new graph here but look what happens when you trace not only am i tracing but i'm tracing by the pretty print values of one half one or two halves and so on well mm -hmm. one whatever but when I trace along with those, it makes it go into nice numbers. If I were to zoom and do um, maybe one eighth, I get a smaller window. And when I trace, it traces by fractions of one eighth. And it reduces the fractions for me. Now, you could go in and change your window settings and do your whatever traces you want. OK, but these are built in for us now. And so I think it makes it a whole lot nicer and quicker to achieve the results that you want. And the zoom decimal window, a lot of people have known this. Uh, the zoom decimal window is really nice, but it only goes for smaller values. So one thing I like to do, um, Tracy's going to be mad at me for stealing all this time, but no, I go for, it. go for it. I like to double all these values, and it still preserves the nice decimal values. And I, I can't do the math in my head, so I just go ahead and do, do times two. Doesn't it give you a skill where window two? It gives you a proportionally correct window. That's nice. Yeah, it's proportionally correct. Oops, I forgot to do the last one. Forgot to do the last one. Um, and it's, it's proportionally correct with a nice trace, okay? If I do this, and now I have a nice, something that roughly is like the standard window, a little bit longer or whatever, but it's proportionally correct. And when I trace on it, I get decent decimals. Now, this is the same on any device. It's always been this, or on any 84. It's been this way for a while. But I'm ashamed to admit that I did this a lot. I would take the decimal window and double all the values, and then we could go. Well, before I realized, under Zoom, if you go over to Zoom Memory. Have you ever noticed Zoom Memory before? Zoom Memory. There were, yeah, this, it took me a while to realize that there's actually a memory but, or menu. And under that memory, there's Zoom Store. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two. So if I choose Zoom Store, it allows you to have one custom designed window. And I've stored that window. And now I can recall it any time by doing Zoom Memory Recall. Okay. Um, so it's a nice little feature over here. Sorry that lets you go down to Zoom Recall and bring back any personally designed stored window. Um, and I usually use the double decimal window. 
or what I call the double decimal window. Again, I like the decimal window because it gives you proportionally correct. That means X distance and Y distances are the same. The tick marks give you the same distance. Kids need to understand that when usually it doesn't start up until you start drawing circles that, oh, we have not been using a, yeah, we've been using a standard window, but it's the TI's determined standard window. It's not proportionally correct. And so I think switching that early on and getting them to understand that and using the zoom decimal and the zoom double decimal to get close to your standard window is really handy so that then they're always they're used to working in with something that's proportionally correct. So double the decimal. Okay. Window. Window. <laughs> I was wondering what he was writing. Ooh, lovely. Lovely. My iPad freaked out on me for a second. <laughs> Sorry. We do not have a smart board in our house. So we're nerds, but we're not that big of a nerd. Okay. All right. So that's one of my favorites is the double decimal window and storing that result. Okay. Now let's go over and talk about transformations, transformation graphing. First with lists. I don't know if you've thought about this or done this um, with any of your classes. I like doing this with my geometry classes um, because it, we talk about transformations and we do it, you know, sometimes within a graphing window, sometimes not, but that way it's not just in terms of functions that you do in algebra two. You can do your transformations in geometry. And she don't let her lie. She just loves doing this because it's about flamingos. We made a we made a flamingo, a stick flamingo, uh, using points. And, and I remember I'm a statistics teacher and lots of statistics teachers teach out of a book that has flamingos on their cover and my room is decorated in flamingos so i like flamingos so anyway these these data on the first slide here and i know you may not be able to read them very easily um we have already entered they'll be in the handout you could do this with any set of ordered pairs but i'm going to okay i've already uh, entered them yeah, can you step back a second? Remind me, how did you get your, where'd you get the L1 and L2 screen? Stat, just, edit. Stat, edit. Okay, just making sure I didn't right. know if they caught that. No, I had these numbers okay. already entered. Yeah. We chose to do that in the interest of time because we were losing a little bit of time and, and all. Um, so I'm going to go second and then stat plot. And I want to graph that. So I'll turn it on. But to do this, we don't want to do this guy because we're going to, if I did that, and if I do it in a zoom standard, oh, I should still have, I guess I should clear that out. If I graph him, I'm not going to, well, you really can't see it real well, but there are there's, some points on my screen. There's some dots there. Dots there. Um, but if I go back to stat plot, oh, by the way, I was on the small dot. Because I'm older now, I need to use the big dot. Now you'll be able to see it. There that doesn't look like a flamingo, okay? But if you're going to do this, you're going to do the connected stat plot. And that's, I'll probably use a medium sized dot. Now I have a flamingo. Uh -oh. And so you could change it to any kind of animal that you like. We have a friend in the middle school, she's dinosaurs. I bet you she could draw a decent dinosaur. And I guess our original yes, flamingo needs to be pink, pink because he's a. Because that's a real flamingo. Yep. Okay. And so now what we can do is we've got our L1 and L2 that gives us a graph of something that we like. And we can ask students to think about transforming that. So if I were to take that pink flamingo and I wanted to get the blue flamingo, what has to happen? Well, all the he's in the negative or is in the second quadrant, so the x values are negative. Okay. But the y values are positive. All right, so let's go over and let's make our x values negative. And so if we go to L3, well, we don't want to type all those numbers in again. Oh, come on. I'm, no, you're going to take forever. Oh, come on, I'm really not. about time earlier. Oh, so okay. All right. Go up on top of L3. Okay, okay. And just use the work that you've already done and say negative and then L1. And L1, you can get too quickly by 
second the number one. Boom. Okay. And I can do the same thing with L4 and make a negative copy of L2. Right. So go ahead and make that negative L2. Except that's not going to get you the blue flamingo. What are you going to do with your... Well, we need to make a, need to make a new graph. Okay. And we want to use... The negative x values, which are L3, okay. and the positive y value, y value, which is our L2. So I want to go and make a new stat plot. Okay. So if we go to plot two and make it with what we want. Okay. So oops, let me turn them on. Turn them on. And then I need to do a connected scatter plot. And we said we got to do L3. L3. Mm -hmm. And then L2. L2. Keep your old positive yep. and you want him oh, we don't want him to have fat corners no small ones and, and i want him blue and you want him blue all right where's blue <laughs> not navy light blue light blue's fine okay not like oh i don't know i wait where was he He's there it's at the very beginning oh there he is <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry okay boom now we Oh, and if I'd have made them closer, they could have been kissing. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, what about the green flamingo? What do we have to have for the green flamingo? And getting them to think about what needs to happen in the connections to get that those different reflections. You are limited to only three pictures because you've got plot one, plot two, and plot three. But I think that's okay. So we need positive X and negative Y. So I want. L4 mm -hmm. and Take the medium dot. Yeah, I could do I I can use the big one, but then he'd have like fat corners. Yeah. And that's fine. Um let's see, fine green. There he is. Okay. Now there's only one other thing that I want to make stand out on here. If you go back to your lists again. And if you look at your L3 and L4 list, we don't remember where they came from because you just, when you were on top of L4, you just said, hey, take the negative L2. Sometime, especially maybe when you're doing um, left right shifts or up down shifts, you actually might want to remember how you got that L4. Where did that L4 come from? So instead of just typing in negative L4, if you type in the double quotes first, we might have to clear that list out. There we go. And then do negative L2. You'll see one change happen. At first, you might not think there's anything different because it really doesn't look much different, but there is a lock up at L4 if you look at the top of L4. And what that lock has done is it's retained that formula. So if you sit on top of the L4 list again, now you actually see where that one came from. So that's the only other thing that usually when I'm creating new lists based off of other lists, I like to lock the formula in. And I just do that by starting off with the double quotes. And the nice thing is if I go back and change the list from which it came, it will um, update the new list. Um, we got questions. Okay. Um, curious, have you tried it with rotations? You would have to switch X and Y. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can do any of those, which is really cool. I mean, I'm the standard just doing the reflections first. But yeah, I've done it with the rotations, getting them to discover how to get things to rotate. So that's. If you do L2 and L1. That's going to be the blue guy. That's the blue guy. So let's see what happens with the blue guy. Ooh, very oh. cool. <laughs> now he's turned, rotate, or but or. Uh, he kind of looks like he died. Yeah, but what <laughs> what's wrong? Why is he messed up now? Because we're in. The, why does he look longer? Why doesn't he look like he did before? What kind of window are we? Are right. we in our? We're in the standard weird window, window oh. where things are not proportionally correct. So, oh, would you mind going to um, the double decimal window? I can, I can go to that. I can do my double decimal. Do, yeah, don't do the hard work. You my, it. I did my Zoom recall, and now at least, now I chopped off his head. Oh, no. Oh, no, I <laughs> decapitated it. Yeah, okay. I could play around with it, but you could figure out, now the window is proportionally correct. Um, 
and I can mess with other things. So yeah, you can any transformation you can confirm, any numeric transformation you can confirm with the lists. Yeah. Um, and you can do, um, we did reflections, but you could do translations by adding to the X or the Y, adding or subtracting. And dilations. And too. dilations by multiply. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So you could have like a family of flamingos, the big flamingo and the couple of little flamingos. I did do that. Behind. Yeah, I did that where once where there was a mama and a couple babies. <laughs> but that's another story. Yeah, that's another story. Okay, we need to keep going. Yeah, we um, got we've got two 12, more big 12, things. Twelve minutes. Yes, so we can do this. All right. So the transformation graphing app. When was the last time you've used it? And again, if things don't look like they look like when we're working it, that means you need to update your operating system. One of the cool things about when you update your operating system now, you actually update the package of apps along with it. So it's not like you need to go and update individual apps anymore. It comes in a package. In a bundle, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bundle is the official word. Right, right. But, okay. So I went to apps, and I'm going to find the one called transformation or transform. And it I gives me a title screen where I activate it. And... The first thing I'm going to notice when I go to Y equals, this is the probably my favorite thing about this. One of the updates is right here. I can quit the app with from the screen, and it tells me I'm in transformation graphing. So I can see it really nicely. It used to not be so evident, and it, when you get out of it, it doesn't say uninstall yeah. transformation. It says quit, quit, which is a nice improvement because people used to get, my kids used to get really freaked out about this. Because we've actually changed how the operating system is working right now. And so different things happen. Okay. And so if kids are like graphing and things aren't happening like they're supposed to, it might be because they have this turned on and never turned it off. And it's easy to recognize. It's easy to recognize, easy to recognize that it's in this mode. Okay. Now hold your breath. What is one of the first kinds of equations when you're doing transformations that you work with? What family? Most often, I do this with with quadratics. Yes. So, okay. So I went back to the left to the little transformation icon, and if you go down and use that uh, menu, there are some prepackaged ones like the slope or linear. There's quadratic. There's vertex form. There's factored form. Um, standard form of quadratic. They're already prepared, and it goes on the cubics. I'm guessing Tracy you wants this I one. Want. Yes. She wants this one. Yes. Okay. Are you happy with blue? I'm happy with blue. Yes. Okay. If I choose this, since it's a standard one, it will populate the uh, y equals for me without me having to type it in. <sighs> now, that's not, I mean, like, it's not the end of the world to type in, but I'm going to use that one probably anyway. So it's already there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now if I press graph, I have a graph where A, B, and C can all be manipulated. So I probably don't want C to be 0.04. Um, I'll make that That's zero. Right. Okay. And I probably don't want to start with B being five. I probably want it to be zero as well. And now I can manipulate, like right now, I can manipulate. C, I'm pressing, pressing the left and right arrows to change the value of C, and I can see the vertical transformation. Now, and I can arrow back up to B and do the same and get the horizontal. You know, it would be really cool if you would graph the parent function, just, just regular old parent function. So I can go down to Y2 or Y3, and I don't want to use Y2 because I can transform two functions at once. Oh, my gosh. I don't yes. have to keep the uh, – I, I can do two at once. Oops, no, I don't want to do X squared squared, just X squared. Um, and now I can have the parent function and the transformation. Now, Tracy is a big fan of the soft keys. I see a soft key. I wonder oh, what it does. go look at the soft key. I wonder what the soft key does. This is where I can go in and set the um, the values, the initial values, or do an animation. And, ooh, I can leave a trail. So I can leave a trail on. And if I go to the graph, now when I, <laughs> when I arrow it over, it leaves a trail of parabolas. Yes. That's kind of cool. That, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. All right, sorry. Yeah, she's she's nerding out over yeah. here. 
Um, we're going to go back in the interest of time. We're going to just quit the app so I can go up and over to here and choose to quit it. And it does this is what I was talking about earlier. It says quit transformation graphing, whereas it used to say uninstall. And notice now I'm back to normal graphing mode, even though that's still in there, A, B and C will no longer do those same functionalities. Okay. So what are we doing? Okay. Next? Uh, well, okay. we want to, the same thing happens for um, inequality graphing. That's been updated yeah, as well. Yeah, that's been updated very nicely. So we, I think we only have seven minutes, so, and maybe we go back and do the sol do a solver real quick. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so show these last right. few slides. So yeah, this same nice feature. So we're not going to go there. You can discover that on your own. Um, oh, we can't show this to you because we're not in the same room together. But one of the new things about sending files, because I know I have a batch of files that I want my students to have on their calculators. You don't have to keep selecting those files. You can send mixed kind of files together, a program and images. It does, they don't have to be the same type. And then once you send them, you'll get this really cool option of resend so that you can don't have to worry about selecting, just, hey, send these files again send these files again so that's really nice that lets you connect to multiple students quicker and send yeah. them faster so that, that i think yeah we can't do demo that in this format um i just put this together because of things that i found i don't know if there's anything on here um just the bundle i think and yeah that idea of when you update your os now you're going to get a bundle and that bundle has the newest of the opera, the apps and everything. And in your bundle, um, you'll get these standard images. Okay, so that's kind of like the big stuff. But now Corey wants to show you the new things. I didn't think about Yeah, that. we forgot Corey. about the solver. Um, and this is a problem I've been using. I've been doing a lot of ACT prep um, and kids like this new solver. So if I do something like the cube root of 3x, um plus nine um plus ten equals i don't know 15. okay and I, i'm sure this is not the most interesting problem i've ever come up with in my life but um with the solver i can it used to be um you had to have it set equal to zero and it worked fine but it was kind of a pain for kids so I have the solver and now I have equation one equals equation two. So again, it's math up arrow and the solver looks different on the CE than it used to. So I can now put in the equation, math uh, cube root, let's see here. And I know this is not the most, let's see three X plus nine. And then I'm gonna get out of here and say plus 10. Oops, sorry, my, my pad is, Acting funny. And then on the other side, I'm going to put 15 or, or 11. I'm going to put, fifth, put the right answer. And there is a soft key for OK. And I still have to give it a guess. So I'm going to say like seven. And when I solve it, it tells me the answer is 38.666. So my kids are like, what? Photo math is on my calculator? Uh, this makes more sense than it's not quite photo math. I tell them I show them my phone, show them the photo app, photo math app, and um, like they are kind of shocked that this calculator is here, or that this is here. Now it only allows you to do one solution at a time. So if you're solving a quadratic, when you make your guess, it's going to find the nearest solution to your guess. Uh, so you still need to know math, um, but this is a nice little feature for ACT testers. Um, and when I show this to kids right before they take the ACT, um, they may not use it very often, but it's definitely a nice function that should be out there. And it's been greatly improved in the last um, operating system. And again, all of the menus are there. It tells you, like, notice it says inter equation E1 equals E2. So I'm setting those two pieces. It says that in the top bar. Okay. And um, to drag that over. There you go. And then we can highlight that for you. See that right there? It tells you what you're doing, what to do. And then using the soft keys, it'll solve. 
we used to have to use the alpha solve feature, which is above enter. Um, but now it's a little bit more intuitive than it used to be. So that was something we forgot to put in the handout, but then it's only because I've been doing a lot of ACT prep recently that I wanted to throw that in there. So hey, I would think you mind showing me one more thing? Because we had a question of someone wants to go back over one thing. Okay. How do we store a function from the home screen into the Y equals screen? Okay. Because I think this is kind of nice where you're focusing on the equation and say, okay, let's put that into the Y1 so that we can graph it. Because there is one key thing that if you don't notice or you miss it, it's not going to work. You're going to get frustrated. It's alpha plus. It. Alpha, alpha plus. So if I do the double quotes, if I do x squared plus two alpha quote. Now that I have that defined, that's like um, an ex well, that's an expression or a string. There's a, probably a computer term for this, but I want that stored into y1. And if I do that, then when I go to y1, oh, it, it's is. there. Um, you may not need that. I mean, I could have done in Y1, but it's certainly nice if I had an expression or had something in the home screen that I just wanted to go ahead and throw in the graphing calculator real quick because I could have used the um, quote and then go back in history to grab it. Yeah. So, so there you go. Is there quotes. any other questions? Because I think we're. Nope. I think I got everything. Okay. Tracy wanted to double check the uh, chat. So, Ray, I think we are going to um, stop sharing our screen.